All right, so in the next example that we were going to do in class, um, the, the function that we're looking at is this j sub 0. Now, I'm not going to go through and talk a lot about this particular function, but I will mention that this is coming from an area in, in mathematics, um, in, uh, in analysis, where we look at defining a special group of functions to accomplish a special purpose. Um, I'm going to name this thing the Bessel function of order zero, but its definition is a series definition. And if you look at it closely, you'll notice that this is really just a, um, it's a power series, because here's your x to the power, and then the rest of this, everything else, which I'll, I'll go ahead and highlight for us, um, all this stuff here, this and this, are your C's. The one thing to notice is a little bit different about this particular example from the one that we did in class is that I've got this 2n power. Now all that 2n power up here means is that all of the odd powers of x, the coefficients are 0. So you've basically got something that looks like it's still c 0 x to the 0 plus c 1 x to the first plus c2 x to the second plus c3 x to the third plus c4 x to the fourth plus c5 x to the fifth plus c6 x to the sixth and so on. But the point here is that all of these guys now are zero. So all the odd coefficients are going to be zero because we're only looking at when we plug in n equals zero, we get x to the zero term. And then when we plug in one, we get the squared term. Uh, it's not important to necessarily be able to identify this fact. I just wanted to show you what that two n up here does in terms of the power series. And then your c zero would be, you know, the coefficient when you plug in n equals zero. The c two in this case is actually what you get when you plug in n equals one and so forth. Now the question again, as it was in our previous examples, is what's the radius of convergence and what's the interval of convergence? So just like before, we're going to use um, what we call the ratio test. So if we plug in um, a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, Let's see what we get. So on top, plugging in n plus 1, oh, there's my pen. up here I'm going to get a negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the 2 times n plus 1. I'm replacing n with n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial squared. Sorry, this tablet that I have at home is not as neat to write with as the one that I use in class. And I don't know how I did that, but I just moved to another page. All right. Okay. So let's try that. And now I'm going to plug in on bottom just n, so negative 1 to the nth over 2 to the 2n times n factorial squared. All right, so the absolute value is going to get rid of these negatives. If I invert and uh, multiply, what I end up with is 2 to the 2n times n factorial squared divided by 2 to the 2n plus 1 is actually 2 to the, and I'm going to distribute this 2 to both of these, so I get 2n plus 2 there, and then I've got an n plus 1 factorial, and I'm going to square that. Now, the 2 to the 2n is going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with a 2 squared on bottom. Now keep in mind that because these are squared, these are like um, n factorial times n factorial. And down here you've got n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial. Now remember, when you have an n plus 1, that 
factorial can also be n plus 1 times n factorial. So is this one, right? So it's n plus 1 times n factorial. So I've rewritten this as this, and now I've rewritten both of those this way, and now these n factorials cancel with these, right? And so what I'm left with is a 1 on top and an n plus 1 squared on bottom. And as n goes to infinity, this is going to blow up. This just stays 4, so this whole thing is going to go to 0 because the bottom of the fraction goes to 0. Now, since that's less than 1, that means this converges for all real numbers. Okay, So in that case, when I say it converges for all real numbers, that means that the radius of convergence would be infinity, and the interval of convergence goes from negative infinity up to positive infinity. That, that would be how I write the answer to what's the radius of convergence, what's the interval of convergence in this particular case. So the Bessel function of order zero converges for all real numbers. All right, I got one last example that I want to go through uh, just to see if we can't find the radius and interval of convergence for this particular series. Again, the question is, for what values of x does this thing converge? So, just like before, we're going to use the ratio test and set whatever it gives us less than 1 if we need to. a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n in absolute value. In our case, that is a negative 3 to the n plus 1 power x to the n plus 1. By the way, I, I lost my x to the 2n somewhere up here. Oh, okay. So take a breather for a second because I messed something up. I left off my x to the 2n. I don't know why I did that. I mean, if I do um, x to the... Uh, this should have been up here. So let's go back and fix my mistake. I don't know why the whole a sub n term, I left off the x to the 2 times n plus 1 here and I left off my x to the 2 in. I just left out the x altogether. What that's going to do is the same thing. I'm going to have now an x um, to the 2 in on bottom, and I'll have an x to the 2 in plus 2 on top. Those cancel, and I'm left with an x squared up top. Now, again, it still goes to 0, so everything is exactly the same. I just I had a brain lapse there for a second and left this thing that I put in a box out. You still include those in the ratio when you do the ratio test. Since x is going to be fixed for any um, value of n, then as n goes to infinity, this thing still goes to 0 because the denominator goes to 0. Sorry about that. I caught that because now on the next example, I needed to make sure and put the this x sub n plus 1 in there. On bottom, in my numerator, I'll have the square root of n plus 1 plus 1, which gives me n plus 2, because I've got an n plus 1 in the place of this n here, and then add 1 gives me n plus 2, over, now negative 3 to the nth, x to the nth, over the square root of n plus 1. All right, let's uh, invert and multiply, and then also take into account uh, the absolute value uh, so this becomes the square root. We'll, we'll just write out the two fractions first. Negative 3 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, divided by square root of n plus 2, times the square root of n plus 1, divided by negative 3 to the nth, x to the nth. And when I cancel, this cancels with all of those. I'm left with just a negative 3. Um, n of these cancel with these n. And so I end up with equals the absolute value of negative 3 times the square root of n plus 1 over the square root of n plus 2 times x. All right, because I'm left with just one of the x's left behind. Uh, take the absolute value, um, I can apply that to the 3 and get 3 
square root of n plus 1 over the square root of n plus 2 times the absolute value of x. Okay, now what does that do as n goes to infinity? Well, that's this piece here converges to 1 because you got a square root of n over square root of n for large n. And so I'm left with 3 absolute value of x. All right, now what I'm going to do, since this is not going to 0 like the one before, I'm going to set that less than 1. Because remember, the ratio test converges if we're less than 1. So what you do to find the radius of convergence is you solve this thing for the absolute value of x. Absolute value of x is going to be less than 1 third. That is your radius of convergence. Okay? Your interval, then, is going to be, once you've solved for the absolute value, you can rewrite this as x is between negative one-third and positive one-third. So your interval is going to go from negative one-third to positive one-third, but now you've got to check the endpoints. You always check the endpoints last. So what happens if x is equal to negative one-third? So I'm going to go back up to the original series, and I'm going to plug in negative one-third in right here and find out whether or not we think this thing converges or diverges. Okay, so you plug that in, you get the sum from n equals zero. Nope. Uh, yes, zero to infinity. You've got a negative three to the nth, and now you've got a one-third to the nth divided by the square root of n plus 1, which if we simplify the numerator, since they're both to the nth, I can write this as a negative 3 times 1 third to the nth, which gives me the square root, sorry, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. On bottom is still square root of n plus 1, and on top I'll have a negative 1 to the nth. Now this is an alternating series because of the negative 1, so we apply the alternating series test, and 1 over the square root of n plus 1 goes to 0 and is decreasing. All right, decreasing which means it converges when x is equal to negative one-third. And then if x is equal to positive one-third, my series becomes n equals zero to infinity of negative three. Why did I, I, I made another mistake. Man, I'm, I'm just out of it. I plugged in positive one-third up here, right? because I didn't put the negative inside right there. Let's do negative one-third here. So for positive one-third, which is the right endpoint, I did not use a negative inside this place where I put x, so I actually was doing positive one-third first. So let's do negative one-third, negative one-third to the nth over the square root of n plus one. So that is the sum from n equal zero to infinity of now this becomes negative three times negative one third to the nth which gives me a positive one over the square root of n plus one okay now this I'm gonna I'm gonna skip going through all the details of it but I would use the limit comparison test with one over the square root of n and remember that this one diverges by the p-test, because that's n to the one-half, which means that this one also diverges. So it diverges at the left endpoint, and it converges at the right endpoint. Converges at plus, diverges at negative, so my interval looks like open negative one-third up to one-third closed. There is the interval of convergence. So well, let's just kind of walk through the summary of this one more time. I used the ratio test, and I found three absolute values of x. 
When I divide that across and solve for the absolute value, I found the radius of convergence. When I rewrite the equality, inequality this way, I know it goes from negative one-third to positive one-third. When I plugged in positive one-third, I got a convergent series. And when I plugged in negative one-third, I got a divergent series. And so my interval of convergence is the interval negative one-third to positive one-third, not including the left endpoint, but includes the right endpoint. All right, that's what I wanted you to see. That's the last of the examples I wanted to walk through. Uh, what the next section is going to be about when we move on to 11.9, which I'm not going to have uh, for you until uh, Wednesday of next week, um, is the uh, things that we can do with the power series. That is, we can actually take derivatives and integrals very easily with power series. All you have to do is differentiate or integrate their individual terms. All right, that's it.